This is Business and Economy Network. Hello, wonderful people watching within and outside Nigeria. Those of us watching via the online channels, thank you for letting us into your homes, offices, and for joining us on yet another exciting episode of your program, our program. It is Business and Economy Network. My name is Ohioze Edna. On our program rundown for today on Business and Economy Network News, we bring to you an interview chat with the country coordinator open forum on agricultural biotechnology nigerian chapter ofab and his recently held second edition of its media award ceremony and for straight talk we have the md ceo apt securities and funds limited one of nigerian's foremost investment banks and for spotlight we continue our interview with the md ceo ankara investment and securities limited an expert in investment, securities, and asset management. You know how we do it. It's never a boring moment. Do stay tuned. I'll be right back. Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB Nigerian Chapter, was set up to spread the good news and enhance knowledge sharing level on creating awareness on agricultural biotechnology and its modern techniques. Creating the ability for everyone to appreciate biotechnology as a means of building an enabling environment for informed and timely decision making. OFA brings together stakeholders in biotechnology, scientists, journalists, the civil society, and everyone all geared towards providing an opportunity to know one another, explore new avenues of bringing the benefits of biotechnology to the Nigerian agricultural sector. And so the second edition of the OFAB Nigerian Media Awards Ceremony took place recently in Abuja, Nigeria, bringing together organizations, agencies, scientists, researchers, individuals in print, radio, television, and bloggers to appreciate and celebrate outstanding media practitioners for their contributions to biotechnology. It's all about recognizing the media, appreciating them, you know, because we have come a long way with them. All what we have achieved from the time we started to this moment, it has been made possible by the media. Without them, we couldn't have been where we are today. And so, that is why the OFAB Africa team like, taught it wise to motivate to find something a way of motivating the media energizing them by giving them due recognition you know putting up this award system and then giving them what they deserve because they really deserve it they deserve to be recognized they deserve, because they give all their lives commit you know their lives to all these uh, making sure that Nigerians get the right information, those scientific facts we share with them, and you know, they also go disseminating this information. Working with them actually has a multiplying effect, and they actually make our work easier. And all they have been so committed, so uh, we really feel that this is the best thing to do to them. and. The best way is for every year um, for us to organize this um, ceremony to appreciate them. Hence, our gathering here today to celebrate members of the fourth estate of the realm who have distinguished themselves in the coverage of modern biotechnology activities in the last uh, one uh, year. No nation makes progress in the absence of a very vibrant media sector. And if you notice all across the world, all the countries that now we refer to as the first world, in all those countries you notice the critical importance of the press and freedom of press in the achievement of those countries. As the government agency charged with the promotion of modern biotechnology. We call on the media to work closely with us in our effort to ensure the technology is successfully deployed in all spheres of our agriculture. 
other countries of the world have moved on to more advanced forms of modern biotechnology, including gene editing, clothing, and so on. Public, if you publish anything that is not truthful and factual and berates national interest, you are not working for your country. Your report must reflect national survival and integrity of our nation. You must continue to report what is truthful. Do not compromise your pain. Our nation will not survive without you in a modern society like ours. I say this because without the media, we will all be in the dark in this modern era. The activism, the environmentalists opposing this technology, peddling uh, negative information about this technology. Because sometimes when I listen to what they say or what they write and send around, it's a matter of concern to me that people can just sit down and cook up stories, you know. I mean, just to cause panic, fear in people, for just for nothing, and so it's it's really, it's um like, what kind of world you know are we in? So sometimes it pulls me down, and but it makes me to put in more, you know, and the other side of it. Yeah, I go down, but after maybe some time, I pick up my bits and pieces. And because I want a food secure Nigeria, um, so that no one goes hungry with time, then I pick up and I carry on. That this war must continue; it must not stop because it's for a good cause. It's for um, those people who are hungry to have something to eat, those farmers who are helpless because they don't have any other means of making money. This is the only one. And if I plant and my farm produce gets um, diseased, there's no hope. I lose it. The farmer loses everything and that's it. And that's the only thing that he has. He has no any other means. He cannot take his children to school. So what will you what will you benefit from that kind of so I mean those things are the kind of things that really motivate me, you know, so that we can be like other worlds. Securities and Fund Limited serve as one of the foremost investment banks in Nigeria. The firm over the years has come to be accepted and endeared to many due to its dynamic means of operation and evident testimonial from many. App Securities is a wholly owned Nigerian company with Mr. Kasim Garba Kofi as the MD CEO. App Securities offers financial advisory, securities trading and investment management services. Objective that has kept the firm strong and focused is the ability to recognize that information technology is an important key in today's business. It has helped to meet on-time needs of clients and brings information to clients' doorstep. With app securities, impossibilities are not tolerated. Everyone believes we can do it and it has paid off. I remember in those days when banks opened a branch for Saturday banking, they will announce it and the whole world will look into them. 
that there is a bank you can go and trade with them on Saturday. By the time the guarantee trust banks start investing in the information technology, other banks were sleeping. Today, most of the state go and see GTB doesn't have more than one branch. But I tell you, if you today you ask 10 accounts, you want to transfer money, you will see between six to seven on GTB account. They are not there, but technology makes them to be everywhere. So we broke from there. By the time they completely reform the Nigerian story chain and they make it information driven, we find there is no way. Foreign investors understand our market and start playing the market. So how do you match when our average Nigerian they are waiting for a daily Pfeiffer to look for the price of the stock, which was done yesterday. They will look at today and make your decisions. Well, our foreign competitors, the foreign investors, they see it real life and they take instant decision. So we cannot match with them. So what we did, we have to go to OMS to take that technology. We spend a lot of money, but we make it friendly that today, distance is not an issue. Wherever you are, qualified or not qualified, you are a broker, you can buy on your own, you can sell on your own. What we even added to it is transfer of fund. Because we look at our people, a lot of them, they are in the remote area. If you say, go to the bank and lodge money, it's another wahala for them. So we insist on in our information technology, it must have a system where instantly you can transfer your fund right from your handset and move on trading. So it takes us six months to achieve that one. But even the, the, the program providers really appreciate it. And today it makes the uh, system to be one of the darling by many of their stop broken firm because they have seen it. We transfer on instantly. You buy and sell. Once the market open, you are there and people can cancel their order and redo. And once you sell, you can use the proceed to buy another stock. So the T plus three is immaterial for those who are on the online. Because online, once you sell instantly, your credit will fall into your account. What you can do, you can trade. Because if you buy today, you, it will be the same T plus three. So what it means that if you sell today, you get your money, but the actual money will come after four working days. So the same thing if you buy today, you pay actually after four working days. So your money is there for you. So we apply this one and it really helps us. We launch it in Joss, we launch it in Gombe, and we are launching it in other rest of the state where we have branches. But we have seen our people now are very friendly. And I can tell you if I like today, I can shut my office. You will see that APT is trading. In this market, we have what we call the stock exchange. For any company to be traded, must be listed in the store exchange and you cannot come to the store exchange without an issuing house who will issue your shares to be a public a company can be public by a minimum of five per a person but most of our company because the law say that if you are 50 and above you must be public so they choose not to be public if they are not up to 50 but i can tell you i know many companies they are plc but they are not up to 50. Take African Finance Corporation, EFC. They are, uh, they are public, but they don't have up to 50 shareholders. So we have this. So what do we do? As an issuing house, we identify those companies and we find them the way to get into the market. And we do that. We work seriously, especially in the North. Today, I'm telling you the whole North has less than 10 companies quoted. Out of over 200 companies quoted. And we have them, but they did not understand. And we are doing everything humanly possible to see that we encourage our rich people because their company need a structure and need to be converted into PLC. So we do that. Issue house, you take company to source for fun. And once you source for the fun, you source it, you convert it into PLC and you can be quoted. And once you are quoted, you have to add strictly adhere with the rule and that make you more exposed. And it encourage other foreign investors to do business with you because they want to play with the company that have corporate governance. A company cannot be quoted without having corporate governance. So that is for the issue house. The other issue we do, 
we do asset management. The asset management, a lot of our investors, especially in the north, they cannot manage their asset. One, they don't understand the market. You need to understand the market to understand the rising and falling so that you will be able to make money. So we assist them to do that. Not only that, we give them a better mix up. Because they say, unless you are very sure, you cannot put all your egg in one basket. But if you are sure, put all your egg in one basket and watch it. Nothing come near. So you get it right. But most of the people, they don't have that capacity. So what we do, we help send to diversify. Go into oil. Go into manufacturing. Go into banking. Go into many diversified your portfolio so that at any given time, you will never lost it. Last year, anybody play the agriculture sector, Perisco oil or Com oil, they have gone the price that have never been in their life. Because the closing of the border helped their product to go higher and they make a very good profit with a strong earning and strong dividend. So if you diversified, you will see that you are there. So what we did, we do this asset management. Not only that, we go extra mile to the pension because pension is asset management. What you do in the pension is asset management. And we apply the same principle. You know, if you know it here, you can apply it the same. Last year, 2017, APT pension fund become number one in term of return. Most of our, both our, those who are contributory in the RSC and the retiree, they get more than 20%, which a position that nobody got it. And what we did, we applied the same principle we have here and apply it there. And transparency. Once you have applied transparency, in whatever you are doing, people will get the results. And that what help us in the asset management. We also go into private equity. Why do you go into private equity? You must diversify. Because when the market was down, 2008, 2009, all the stock broking couldn't pay salary. Unless you diversify. So our diversification really helped us. We are into pension fund, it helped us. We are into engineering, uh, uh, into Armeco, that is Ariwa Metal Container Company, which is into engineering, that one also help us. We are into be ready chain. We have FET be ready chain, that one help us. Not only that, we go extra mile to Porex. We have FXDM, which trade in the Porex. But now Antex Global, uh, Antex Africa Global, they have taken us and we are there with them. And we are doing the same, like what uh, Porex Time is doing, what Alfari is doing. All this, they are companies that they are doing very well. I can tell you they run as much as 1 million deposit on monthly basis. And you can imagine if you have a capacity to collect 1 million deposit of US dollar in one month and you trade it. This is a market that we are not there. And we need our regulators to come out with regulation. There is the need for more Nigerians in various industries like insurance, pension scheme operators, and the unskilled workforce, all to embrace various investment plans and make investment foremost in their mind, because there is enough playing and investment ground for all. These are the words of Mr. Babatude Dada, the MD CEO of Ankara Investment and Securities Limited, located in Lagos State, Nigeria, with branches across the country. The firm offers products and services in financial asset management, estate management planning, asset management services, investment management services, to mention a few. And Korea offers variety of exclusive investment products to stakeholders, and there has been a trend of good return on investment over the years. The playing field is big enough. Um, the truth is that uh, we have not even scratched the surface of investable funds in Nigeria. <clears throat> you know, when you look at the 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 market segmentation we have a lot of um, foreigners that actually what, what we call foreign portfolio investors that are in nigeria and they are the ones that are even you know doing a lot of the the business in the stock market presently and anytime they feel uncomfortable and they move their money out we feel the impact but locally we still feel that the retail markets even the the insurance industry and even the pension industry you know they have a, a role to play you know, so, you know, 
we are targeting we are targeting the local market and we are trying to build our brand. You know, when people hear that brand and Korea, it will I believe you know it's part of our plan. That's what we are trying to do. We we have a a young and dynamic workforce, you know, who understand you know the vision and the dream, you know, that we're uh, the vision that we're trying to build. You know, so there's a lot of work to be done, but I believe, you know, we're slowly achieving it and we're getting there, you know, and that's our plan to, you know, to get Ankoria to be foremost in the minds of people when they think investments, they think Ankoria. We're going to rely a lot on technology. It's, um, we believe it's one of the most effective ways, especially when we're targeting the certain demographic of the market that is, you know, a younger population that, are, that we believe are technology savvy. Um, you know, so for example, we believe there's there are a lot of Nigerians in diaspora who, even though they've gone abroad, they still want to be part of Nigeria. They still want to be able to invest, and the only way they can effectively invest is providing a platform for them to be able to access, you know, investments in Nigeria. So we're spending a lot of money on on technology right now to ensure that we give them a platform. It's just like your internet banking that the the banks provide. We're also providing, you know, portals for clients to be able to, you know, access their investments, communicate with us. And, you know, for people that want to be able to also buy and sell shares directly, our, portf our, our portal actually also does that. And similarly for our asset management side as well, uh, by the time the fund is ready, the fund will be, you know, for those, for instance, who want to be investing on a, on a monthly basis, e.g. let's say you collect your salary, you know, on the 31st of the month, you can directly credit your, your your fund account or you can set up a direct debit. So, you know, those are the things that we're trying to put in place to ensure that we capture that market of people who are, you know, who are that way inclined in terms of, you know, use of technology. We've experienced challenges over the years. Um, I'll say especially Nigeria being a, a developing and evolving market, you know, um, and Korea started even while Nigeria was still in a military regime, you know, through the transition to democracy, and uh, you know, the various changes in government. <clears throat> but what we have had over that time is um, good and solid leadership of the organization, right from our founder and even to the present day management. Um, we, you know, for us, the number one thing is to is to ensure that um, we have a long-term vision and we you know we stick by it you know so when we when we meet um, any form of challenge or any change in regulation which we have because when this company was started we remember the the minimum capital in the industry then was five million as of today is 300 million in that time a lot of companies have either you know folded up surrendered their licenses you know but for us We've uh, we've stood all that test of time. We've uh, through you know innovation and just being you know staying relevant in the market, making the right decisions with the right team. You know we've maneuvered all those all those murky waters, and you know we're still here to stay. And the fact is that um, regulation will always change, market conditions will always change. You know in the last few years we've seen a situation where you know we've experienced um, a bearish market where the stock markets have crashed. You know, but that, that hasn't deterred us. It um, encourages us to be more creative, look at other, um, you know, ideas, and especially, you know, looking for solutions to our clients. Because the truth is that people always have money. They always need places to invest. And it's our, it's our, it's, it's our job to ensure that, you know, we find the safest havens for people to put their money without, you know, losing sleep. In our case, when we say um, estate planning, we're actually referring to someone who is actually planning the you know for for life after you know him or herself you know so that um, the beneficiaries or the loved ones that the person leaves behind they don't um, they don't run into any issues or problems after the person is gone or after the person is diseased so we help people plan you know for for their demise essentially that's what that service is about and then after they are gone we can also you know help the family do the endorsement and the transmission of whatever assets that person must have left behind. Well, um, the NPR at 14% is good, but um, it's not enough because it's a, it's a single variable out of 
<clears throat> you know, so many variables that come together to determine, you know, borrowing costs. Typically, you know, borrowing in Nigeria is very expensive. And when you talk to our colleagues in the banking industry, they will explain to you why, you know, because they face a lot of risks, <clears throat> you know, and a high cost of operating in the environment as well. You know, uh, like us, they're also a business. They, they have to pay for qualified staff. Um, you know, they have to run offices, multiple branches, you know, um, generate their power. So it's not enough for, you know, the emperor to be 14. It can be passed directly to, um, to consumers. There are other factors, even the, you know, the, the CRR, you know, which the CBN mandates upon banks as well. And so many other factors that come into play. So on its own, it's not enough. A lot still has to be done to, to let this, um, you know, the benefits of a low NPR, you know, pass on to consumers. And that's the only way that the economy can grow. This is Business and Economy Network. viewers i hope it was worth your time and we've all learned something new from today's episode of the program there is a need to enhance modern biotechnology as a means to eradicate hunger in a nation like nigeria with a high growing population we've also been told that investment is open to everyone there is a product or service that will suit what you want to do and how you want to do it thank you so much for your time thank you for tuning in this is the more time we permit us to take Join us same time, same station next week. We love you. God bless you.